Amen. Speaking of, you know what? I've got a scripture that I want to share. This has been just, it's been going over in my heart for weeks now. I keep coming back to the scripture. Um, and I really hope that it's an encouragement to you because I've heard over the last few months and, you know, so, well, I'm not the person on the stage preaching or, you know, I, I just, I'm, I just know how to bake or, you know, I'm just a greeter. Or I, I just, I can, let me encourage you with this. Romans 12, starting in verse six, it says, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. The Passion Translation says he's given us grace gifts. I like that. In other words, there's something that God has graced you to do. What he's graced you to do may not be what he's graced me to do or what he's graced Kim to do or he's graced Nikki to do, but each of us are graced to do something. It goes on to say, so if, the, if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you were a teacher, teach well. Man, it's a gift to be able to teach others. If your gift is to encourage, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take that responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. I want to encourage you not to diminish what God has graced you to do. Don't talk yourself down. Don't say, yeah, but this person, I, I do this all the time because I am not Miss Susie Homemaker. <laughs> like, that's not me. I'm not this great cook. I'm not this great sewer, crafty. That's not me. And I have found myself many times going, well, this person's just amazing. You know, and then I start to beat myself up. No, no, no. I'm just, that's, I'm not graced to do that, obviously. <laughs> but I am graced to teach I am graced to edify and to exhort. And so you know what I need to do? I need to embrace my gift and I need to use it even more. Let me tell you a little story. <laughs> this past week, um, I never get sick, ever, never, ever, ever get sick. But I was down for the count for a couple days this week. I mean, I came to work on Wednesday. I had no business being at work. And somebody came into my office and they recognized and they're like, you really need to go home. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I came to service that night. Had no business being at service Wednesday. I about collapsed afterwards, and I spent the next two days in bed. I had, and she's going to get mad at me, but Miss Stacy Henderson came to my house three days in a row with homemade soup. She gave me the soup. She took Clorox wipes, uh, wiped down my doorknobs, <laughs> you know, wiped down my sink and my bathroom. She took my drinking straw out. She washed it for me. She made sure I had water. She made sure I was good to go. She left on Thursday, or after she left on Thursday, and I just began to cry in bed. And I was like so thankful that, and if you, and if you know Stacy, you know she's got a heart of gold. And she has got a great gift to serve others. Like, it's evident. You'll see that in her life. And I was like, I am so thankful that somebody in this church has the gift of serving others and who just, I didn't ask for it, I wasn't looking for it, but just came and just served me and loved on me. That was precious. I didn't need necessarily that moment a, a prophetic gift. <laughs> I didn't need a teaching gift or the gift of leadership. I didn't need, no, I just needed the gift of somebody serving me and loving on me. I told my children this morning on the way to church, I said, I just want you children to know. I said, two and a half days I was in bed. I said, not once did you pop your head in to say, Mom, are you okay? Mom, is there anything I can do for you? Mom, I love you. Or you, you know, I said, not once. And they all started giggling and laughing. And I said, obviously, that's not their gift. <laughs> That's not their gift, but they are graced to do something. So I just want to encourage you, whatever your gift is, that grace gift, embrace it, and you begin to hone in on it. I was listening. I'm, I'm going through a leadership devotional 
by John Maxwell. And one of the things he says, he said there's a, I want to say it's 70, 20, 10. No, 75, 20, and 5, I think is the principle. And what he says is spend 75% of your time of what you're really good at. And that was actually powerful to me because I had not heard that before. It says, whatever you're really good at, you spend that 75% to get even better. He said the 20%, those areas that you want to grow in, you spend 20%. 5%, those areas that you're really weak in, that's what you spend your time in. Oh, that might set somebody free because it's like we're just pointing out all the things that we're not good at. And I'm, I'm, I'm weak in this area, weak in that. I really got to work. No, 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 no. You find your strength. You hone in on it and you begin to strengthen it. Amen.